The IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship season shifts its way to upstate New York for the famous sailing six hours at the Glen. The man and machine will be tested on one of the most picturesque racing backdrops, the road course at Watkins Glen International. This is the second race of the weekend for Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America. Entering round four of the season, the pro team from the number 29 Change Racing Lamborghini and their drivers, Corey Lewis and Richie Antonucci, hold the top spot in the points, winning two of the first three races of the season. In the Pro-Am class, two racing legends should be fun to watch. 31-time IndyCar winner and NBC analyst Paul Tracy suits up in the 69 Prestige Performance race car. Supercross and motocross champion Australian Chad Reed will trade in two wheels for four, driving for Dream Racing Motorsports number 22. Now for a closer look at Watkins Glen International, let's join Brian Till and Jeremy Shaw for the call. Watkins Glen International, one of the most iconic road racing circuits in North America. Back from the 50s is where the history goes here. A long back straight into the inner loop. We run the long circuit. Look for passing inner loop, turn eight, also known as the heel of the boot, and certainly turn one. Like I said, iconic. It is uphill, downhill, fast corners, slow corners. Watkins Glen has everything a driver could want and more. No better way to get a look at this racetrack than on board. So let's take a lap. Corey Lewis here at Change Racing, just crossing start finish line, heading down into turn one, breaking just before the three board, turning in, trying to get the car to rotate as best as possible, quickly back into the throttle, up through the fast S's here. These cars are basically full throttle the whole way through. As you crest the hill here, grabbing six gear, going down uh, the back straightaway, going into the bus stop. Here we're checking our mirrors, see if there's anything behind us. Small little brake check as we come into the bus stop. Heavy on the brakes, eating up all the curbing on the right-hand side, a little bit on the left, and eating up a lot here on the final right. As we enter the carousel here, trying to squeeze into the throttle as much as we possibly can, hard back into the throttle, tracking out all the way towards our left. Coming back down the hill here, heavy on the brakes, looking ahead, trying to get the car to rotate. Heavy back into the throttle, right here on the exit, using all the track out. As we go into the toe of the boot here, heavy on the brace, really trying to dime in the corner here, get back to throttle as quickly as possible, tracking all the way out towards the left, using a little bit of the access road there. Going up the hill here, again, once again, checking behind us, see if there's anything coming behind us. Straight line brake, turning in, really trying to roll back into the throttle, use the track out on the left, coming back up towards the right, up the hill. Heavy on the brakes, again, late turn in, trying to get the car to rotate, heavy into the throttle, tracking out towards our right. Final two corners coming up ahead here. Small brush of the brakes, quickly back into the throttle, eating up some of the curbing here on the right-hand side. Final corner, straight line hard brake, tricky one up ahead here, rolling back in the throttle as quickly as possible, tracking all the way out towards the left. And that's one lap around Watkins Glen. to race one from yesterday, and it was a good one, a barn burner at the start. Richard Antonucci from the pole leads to turn one, but five wide down into turn one. That's just how competitive this series is. And then the 27, Paolo Roberte past the 34, Patrick Liddy for third. Good heart battling there. A little bit later in the LV Cup class, Ron Adapatu gets a little help uh, from William Hubble. That doesn't go his way. And then a big scary moment, 34, Bryce Miller behind the wheel. Loses the left rear Pirelli tire and the climbing S's to the back straightaway does not hit anything. But what a weekend for Corey Lewis and Richard Antonucci. They stomped the field yesterday and they'll be up front again for the start here today for race number two at Watkins Glen. It could not be a better day either. The rain came through earlier in the day He's washed a lot of rubber off the racetrack, but right now temperature is somewhat cool, clean racetrack. I expect some pretty quick lap times, Jeremy Shaw. 
to see some very, very fast lap times indeed. We've had a race already this morning, a new lap record set there. The track is really super fast. This portion of the here, the, the climbing is, that's where we saw D. Bryce Miller had that spin yesterday. A brilliant save. Well, maybe a bit of luck involved as well, but he got away with it. He didn't hit anything. Uh, the car is fine, but certainly there are some teams that are a little bit worried. They've had a few punctures this weekend, and with the track as grippy as it is this morning, Brian, uh, that makes uh, it's going to make a few people a little bit nervous. Talk to the engineers about warming up these Pirelli yes. tires and trying to find the pressure and temperature that you want. And they said there really is a particular way Pirelli wants you to do it. They would prefer that you warm them up longitudinally. In other words, accelerate and decelerate back and forth, not laterally with the big side to side movements that we've seen in the past based upon the construction of the tire. If you do that, I think you'll have much better longevity in these tires. Yesterday, the temperature is much higher. I expect a little nicer temperature for those tires today and maybe better conditions as far as longevity goes. It's going to be a very hot pace, though, in a very tight field of cars. Very quick front row. This is where we saw the battles yesterday and a much more aligned start as the field comes to take the green. Spirazuli in the 27, drivers left, the white 29. Corey Lewis outside, Lamborghini Dallas, Lamborghini Charlotte, and they bump, and you see the 29 off the racetrack. Corey Lewis pushed wide, and he'll drop back to third. Yeah, and Sandy Mitchell, I think, take advantage of that one. He'll jump through to second position. Corey Lewis uh, didn't have much room on the exit of that corner, did he? Uh, he, he might be... Uh, asking race control about that. You're supposed to be leaving a car width of room there in order not to be pushed off the racetrack. But uh, it was a very exciting start and certainly cleaned down into the first corner, but all sorts of chalk in position as they head toward the inner loop. Are they going to make it through all, all of them? I think they are. It's a stroke of luck. Lined up nose to tail through the inner loop, through the bus stop, and then down back into what we call the boot. Spears Wally leads in that number 27 Lamborghini of Dallas entry in a very aggressive start as he moved Corey Lewis out and over that curb. Spirelli tires still somewhat cool right now and probably don't have maximum grip. It'll take a lap or two to get that. And I'm sure at least if you talk to Spears Wally, that's what he would say. Hey, I just didn't mean to. Tires just still a little bit cool. Corey Lewis drops a position, but we've got a long race to go. Remember, 50 minutes, there will be a pit stop, a manda mandatory pit stop, somewhere between the 20 and 30 minute mark. Yeah, so around about halfway through this race. Uh, the two top classes, the Pro and the Pro, am they have to have two drivers per car for each of the races in in uh, in am and lb cup you can go one or two drivers that's your choice but everybody will have to make a pit stop during this race irrespective of whether you have one driver or two sandy mitchell with that good start took advantage of the aggressive move up front by spears wally he moved into second Lamborghini Paramus, uh, the prestige performance Wayne Taylor Racing Camp. Five cars under that tent. There's Paul Tracy in the black and gold number 69, having a spirited battle right now with the number six, Stephen Agacani. And for Paul Tracy, he's got to be going, I'm racing with a 16-year-old, and he is all over me. Tracy gets the better of Agacani up through the climbing S's. A little bit of a battle there in turn one. Tracy, the IndyCar veteran, Cart champion down the back straight away towards the bus stop. Two different classes right there, and that's the thing about this Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America series. Four different classes racing at the same time. It's just like watching the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. You have to understand who you're racing with and not get caught up in the emotion of it. Know who's around you and whether you're racing with them for class position and points. That's a problem. We were just talking about knowing who you're racing with. Paul Tracy and Stephen Agakani caught up in an incident both off the racetrack and into the gravel. You've got to have a better idea of who's around you. What I was going to say when I was watching them into the toe of the boot a short time ago, it's the braking areas that Paul Tracy said he needed to work on, getting familiar with the anti-lock braking system on this Lamborghini Huracan Evo. Don't really know exactly what happened. We could see the aftermath and both cars off, both have rejoined, but perhaps in one of those braking zones that you could see Agakani a little bit better on the brakes as we were watching them a little bit earlier. And perhaps that's what caught Paul Tracy out. But 
I'll go back to two different class cars. You got to know who you're racing with. Yeah, Nagakan, he has rejoined at the back of the pack. The youngster, just 16 years of age, he was too young to take part in the first two races of the season at Barber Mad Sports Park in April. He only turned his 16th birthday the following Wednesday. Uh, he'd have loved the, the race a bit to be <laughs> a week later, but it was a brilliant debut by this young man yesterday. He was very, very calm at the start. He lost a couple of positions yesterday, didn't phase him, ran a brilliant race, made his first pit stop a couple of, made his only pit stop a couple of laps after McKay Snow, who'd led the race, and also won both of the AM races at Barber. And because of that, Agakani turned two super qualifying type laps before that pit stop, came out of the pitch just ahead of McKay Snow and held him off to the finish. But unfortunately today, Agakani is involved in that incident with Paul Tracy, now rejoins at the back of the field. It's what this series is all about. You've got very experienced drivers, new drivers cutting their teeth, trying to find their way in the world of sports car racing for Steven Agakani, not going the way he wanted to today. And Watkins Glen Spears, while he's still in front in the number 27, Sandy Mitchell right behind. And Jeremy, I think Mitchell has really kind of closed it down onto the back of the 27. He may have something for Spears Wally if he can get up to that rear wing. Yeah, I and mean, he was very impressive yesterday was the, the young Scotsman, just 19 years of age. And the pace at the front here is really hot this afternoon. I'm super impressed. In fact, the first flying lap uh, by our race leader, Cedric Spears Wally, was a 1 minute uh, 46. 0.27, and that is quicker than the lap record that was set last year by Austin Versteeg. So uh, seriously impressive that was. And uh, for the and the second lap around, they weren't quite as quick, 46.8. But the uh, race leader, he's got his mirrors full of Sandy Mitchell. Mitchell into the braking zone seems to be able to kind of grab that rope and pull himself towards the 27 of Spears Wally just in front. Corey Lewis has dropped back just a little bit, about two seconds behind Mitchell, kind of holding station right there and perhaps trying to make sure that he maintains some decent tires to hand over to Richie Antonucci on that pit stop. You've got to keep that in mind. These Pirelli tires have to go for 50 minutes, and you've got to make sure that when you hand that car over, there are no tire changes that your teammate yeah. has something that they can work with in the final stages of the race. Yeah, that's right. This is a great battle up in the front of the field, though, isn't it? And uh, this just maybe, maybe a Lamborghini Huracan Super Trevero Evo car length between those two. And maybe 8, 10 car lengths back. Hanging right there is Corey Lewis, the, uh, the race winner from yesterday and the championship leader. He's, he will hand over that car later this morning to Richie Antonucci. onto the front straightaway yet again here at Watkins Glen. Spears Wally seems to have been able to pull out just a little bit over Sandy Mitchell. That's the battle for the overall lead here at Watkins Glen. It's also the battle for honors in the pro category. Bruno Giancara, former IndyCar star, leads the Pro-Am category, running fourth overall. Looking back a little bit further, McKay Snow leading in the AM category in his number 63 entry, and Mel Johnson leading in LB Cup, the four different classes in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo North American Championship. The 22, Chad Reed, yes, Chad Reed, if you're a motorsports fan, you recognize that name as a Supercross hero. He is making his Lamborghini Super Trofeo North American debut this weekend, and he's been impressive. And I would expect that out of a competitor like Chad Reed, somebody who understands balance and nuance as far as feeling a motorcycle underneath you. Yeah, you've got two more tires on the car, oh. and it's a, a, a different platform, but it's still about feeling, analyzing, and trying to make the best of it. Driving the car is one thing, Racing it is something different, and going out and testing is completely different than racing wheel to wheel. So we'll see how well Chad does throughout the weekend. He had a good run yesterday, having a good run today, and things definitely closing down up front. Yeah, Chad Reed uh, just turned uh, his, uh, his best lap of the race, I think, last time around, and he's up into 10th place, having started in 14th. But the quickest car on the track last time around was actually the third place car. Now, they're all about identical lap times, the top three. Uh, with uh, Cedric Spiriswali, Sandy Mitchell, and Corey Lewis. Cedric Spiriswali seems to have an advantage through the last couple of corners, 10 and 11, but that last lap, Sandy Mitchell letting it all hang out out of the toe of the boot, drops a left rear wheel off, 
kicks up a cloud of dust and that cost him maybe a tenth couple of car lengths and it's just going to be back and forth to see what you can get talk about see what you can get that black and gold 69 paul tracy is dropped to the back of the pro-am category and he does not want to stay there for very long and it's going to be a pretty intense battle as he has caught chad reed We'll see if Reed has elbows out like you would on a motocross bike as they head down to turn one. The thrill from West Hill under braking. And that's where Paul said he needed to do the work. He needed to learn more about this Lamborghini Huracan. Was under braking, makes quick work of Chad Reed, picks up another position. And now he'll have his sight set on the 09, that black and yellow Lamborghini Huracan of Damon Oki from Lamborghini Vancouver. A little, fit, a little bit further back. There's some good battles all the way down through the field, even for the 17th, 18th, and 19th places. We've got uh, Jonathan Hirschberg, Matt Dickin, and Ron Atta for two. Absolutely no to tell, but that's the same at the front of the field as well. And Cedric Zbirozwali turning consistent lap times in the sort of mid to high 1 minute 46s. The uh, qualifying pace was 145.5 uh, yesterday. But this is a really close battle between these three at the front of the field. Sandy Mitchell not letting Cedric spears -Wally get away. And we'll see if he can make the move. Can the number one take over the number one spot here in the next couple of laps? Four different classes in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America. Four different classes on the iconic Watkins Glen circuit right now. It's race number four of the season. Race number two of the weekend for the competitors in Lamborghini Super Trofeo. And we've got great battles all around the racetrack. Cedric spears Wally leads over Sandy Mitchell for the overall lead and the pro class lead, but battles throughout. Love to watch these cars. 620 plus horsepower, five, more than 500 foot pounds of torque. Any lock braking systems, traction control. These are serious race cars. Good downforce, good aerodynamics on this platform. 27, Cedric spears -Wally down through the laces of the boot, and it seems like the far end of the racetrack from the bus stop through the long course is where Sandy Mitchell has an advantage on the 27. But you get onto the front straightaway and through that last 10, 11 complex through turn one, the tables seem to turn a little bit. It's, it's some ebb and flow here. It is, isn't it? It's, uh... But it is, these cars are so closely matched, it's certainly not easy uh, to, to make a pass. So that's a, a very equal battle there uh, amongst the leaders. Back in the LB Cup class, Mel Johnson, who's got a, a perfect record so far, but he was a little bit lucky yesterday. He scored his, his third win yesterday. He passed Stephanie Simo right at the end of the race. But he, uh, the reason I say he was lucky was because Ashton Harrison, who shares the... Uh, the, num the number 43 car with Stephanie Simo. She did a great first. It was well ahead of Mel Johnson prior to the pit stops and after the pit stops and before the full course caution. It was caused by that spin when the tire blew for uh, D. Bryce Miller. There was a kind of a bit of a delay before the full course caution was caused. During that delay from when the incident had occurred, the race leader overtook Ash Harris, or Stephanie Simo, I should say, because they'd made the driver change at that stage. And that meant that Stephanie was a lap down to the race leader. If not, if the caution had come out a little bit earlier, then Mel Johnson would have been lapped, Stephanie Simo not, and that would have enabled her pretty much a clear run to the finish. So uh, Mel got a little bit lucky there with the time of that caution, but he took full advantage of it, and he leads again in the LB Club here this morning. Stephen Agakani in the number six, trying to work his way up from the problem that he had with Paul Tracy. The Lamborghini of Beverly Hills entry now going past Chad Reed. Once again, different classes and a big problem for the 63. McKay Snow, significant damage Oops. to the right rear of his Lamborghini Huracan. They're at the exit of the bus stop and don't know if he, there was another car involved or not, but significant damage for McKay Snow, that Lamborghini of Charlotte entry. That car is not going to go anywhere. No, he'd be dicing there with uh, Bryce Miller in the uh, number 
34 car, those two have been pretty much nose to tail all the way through this race. But once again, know who you're racing with. And I think McKay Snow does this on his own at the exit of the bus stop. The car gets a little bit loose, cannot get it back, and makes significant impact with the tire wall drivers left at the exit of the bus stop. Day done for McKay Snow. That yeah. will bring out a full course caution. Uh, I would uh, imagine so. He's, he's quite a way off the race tonight, but yeah, the caution is out now. But for McKay Snow, he had a, uh, uh, up until yesterday, well, he had a perfect record from the first two races of the season in the AM Cup for McKay Snow, two poles, two wins. Yesterday, though, he was beaten to the checkered flag by Stephen Agakani. Uh, and uh, to this DNF for McKay Snow, he will still score championship points. That's the good news. Uh, but he'll certainly lose ground to the other contenders in the AM Cup category. And for Stephen Agakani, who missed the first race, there's a replay of what happened. He just got it sideways, yeah, going into the second part of the inner loop. Ouch, that's a heavy impact. Significant impact with the tire wall at the outside. But this kind of goes back to you wonder if, to some extent, McKay didn't walk away from Barber and say, hey, I I'm in a good position here. We've got a great team. I've got a great car. We're doing good things. We've got the points lead and off we go. And then he comes here and you throw another car into the mix in his category. And it's not just throw one in. It's Steven Agakani who qualifies on the pole and wins the race yesterday. And you wonder if there's a little bit of pressure that comes with that, maybe causes you to press a little bit too hard. out on the safety vehicle green flag waves it'll be one lap i would think before the pit stop window opens you've got to go back to green so that you can reset everything before the pit stop window is open and on a green flag restart you can pass as soon as the flag comes out and pressure is on also a much quicker restart and Cedric spares Wally wasted absolutely no time in pulling the trigger. We actually saw Richie Antonucci do that yesterday on a restart and just left the field. Spares Wally not as good a restart as Antonucci had yesterday, but still some good distance between himself and Sandy Mitchell. Yeah, and this time there was no battling going on behind him. So uh, that's why I think in second place, Sandy Mitchell was able to pretty much stay with uh, Spirituali at the front of the field, but Corey Lewis, he's right there as well. Bruno Junqueira is not too far behind in fourth place, but right behind Bruno is Brandon Godovic and Bryce Miller as well. So that's a super three-car battle for fourth place as well, and further battles all the way down the order. Brandon Godovic and Connor Daly, he'll hand over to Connor Daly. That's the co-driver. They're second in the championship in their Lamborghini of Palm Beach entry. And I would imagine every crew chief said on the radio, all right, green, green, green on the restart. Don't do anything silly. Keep it in one piece. Keep it where it is. If you can gain a position, that's great. Don't risk anything. We got to get this pit stop done, get your teammate in, and get to the checkered flag. So unless it was just given to you right there, I don't think you'd be too aggressive trying to get it. You just want to get around 3.4 miles and get into the pits and start this pit sequence. Yeah, the pits, gonna be, the pits are going to be pretty busy over the next couple of laps. It's going to be interesting to see who comes in this lap and who comes in the next lap. The window's still going to be open for a little while yet, so they don't have to come in this time around. Uh, and uh, we'll see who does and who doesn't. Well, just as I was saying, Make sure you don't do anything on this restart. We understand there was contact between the 43 and the 88, and indeed, cars already coming to pit lane. I don't know if the 27 stayed out or not, but the number one, did. Sandy Mitchell, is in, as well as Corey Lewis in the 29. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, first place car did stay out, as did Bruno Junquera, uh, who had been running fourth, so he's up into second position. Minimum pit stop time, so the drivers don't have to scurry about too much. No tire changes, it's just a simple driver change. But there is a minimum time. It is 90 seconds from the pit in line to the pit out line. If it's a two driver format, if there's one driver in the car, it's a 93 second minimum pit stop from the pit in line to the pit out line. So don't get in a hurry. Don't make a mistake. Make sure your belts are on and everything's good to go. And the reason for that three second discrepancy between the single driver cars and the, and the dual driver cars is because if you're a single driver car, you've done the first half of the race, you come in, you've made your pit stop. You know exactly how that uh, car is handling. You know exactly how much heat there is in the Pirelli tires. You can get out there, out of the pit lane and just go. For the driver who's hopping into the car, he'll have had some words of advice from his teammates, but he won't know for sure 
himself exactly how that car is handling. So it's uh, that's why there's a bit of a discrepancy in, in that minimum pit stop uh, uh, allowance because it'll take the second driver in the two driver cars just a little bit of time to get himself fully up to speed. Chad Reed, his day is done as he hands over to Ryan Hardwick, his teammate. He, Hardwick, the 2018 Super Trofeo World Champion and North American Champion in the AM category. Takes the 22 Lamborghini of Atlanta entry back on track. And now the 27 Cedric Sparizwali Lamborghini Dallas in. He'll hand over to Paolo Roberte, who is very experienced in sports car racing and in these Lamborghinis. Yeah, he is. And uh, the two uh, AM class, well, the AM class leader stays out. Stephen Agacani uh, is now in the fourth position as he goes across the line in car number six, turning some good lap times. And uh, this is exactly what he did yesterday. Okay, his, his chief rival is not is no longer in the race, McKay Snow, but that's what he did yesterday. Agacani stayed out a couple of laps longer. McKay turned some really fast laps before making his pit stop. And because he was completely up to speed he, uh, before the stop, he knew exactly how fast he could run afterwards as well. Complexion of race number two here at Watkins Glen changing because of the full course caution and the pit stops. We'll see how this shakes out. Bruno Giancara now being shown in the lead at Watkins Glen in his Pro-Am entry as pit stops continuing. Not surprising in the Pro-Am class if you've got your pro in the car right now to leave him in as long as you possibly can. And that's going to give the Am driver less time in the car. Paul Tracy coming back from the problem that he had earlier. The yellow certainly helped bunch the field. He's only about 10 seconds behind the leader, Bruno Giancara. Yes, but look who's right. Well, we can't see in this picture, but the guy who's right behind Paul Tracy is Stephen, Stephen Agacardi. Agacardi. <laughs> who they had their little dust up on the racetrack. We still don't know exactly what happened there, but the youngster attacking back and moving his way back up towards the back of the 69 Lamborghini Paramus entry from Prestige Performance with Paul Tracy behind the wheel making his debut. Yeah, and I think Bruno Juncker is going to have to come into the pits this time. He doesn't, actually. Uh, but uh, maybe the, the, the uh, pit stop window, I think, is, is perhaps still open and should be just about time to come in and make his stop. It's a 10-minute pit stop window, and as long as you're in across the pit end line at 9 minutes and 59 seconds, you're OK. But if you cross it at 10 minutes or beyond, you have run afoul of the rules, and that is a problem, and it will ruin your day very quickly. Tracy now in second place, and I think he's closing down on Bruno Giancara just a little bit. I, Bruno was laughing earlier, and he said, we're both enjoying this, and I am having so much fun. And Paul's already making excuses. He says he has less time in the car than I do, but I haven't really tested that much. They're underneath the same tent over at Prestige Performance, Wayne Taylor Racing, and you know there's some good-natured ribbing that goes on uh, in the debriefs, I'm sure, this weekend. But a lot of pride at stake for these guys, too. You know, even though they're not doing this for a profession anymore, they still want to have bragging rights at the end of the day. Oh, yes. Giancara saying there's a lot to learn about this car and the nuances of driving it, the anti-lock braking system, how you need to address that. And he's going to hand that car over to his teammate Bradley Baker. And he said Baker is a guy who runs in the prototype challenge category as well. And he said, you know, he's got to go between a car without any lock brakes and without traction control into this Lamborghini that has it. And it takes time to adjust to the braking techniques and how you would adjust with the throttle application on the way off the corner. But Bruno Giancara absolutely loving his time behind the wheel of that Lamborghini Huracan. Evo and the 53 on pit road now and Bradley Baker will have his turn here with 19 minutes and 20 seconds yet to go from Watkins Glen. As we cycle through the pit stops, Giancara is in. The 69 of Paul Tracy is in. He'll hand over to William Hubble. Expect to see Richie Antonucci behind the wheel of that 29 entry from Change Racing move to the front. Lamborghini of Charlotte entry. And that's where we saw the 29 yesterday. They are having a spectacular season so far. Paulo 
Alberte in the number 27 Lamborghini of Dallas entry, trying to hold on as best he can to the back of the 29, but Richie Antonucci seems to be slipping away his Lamborghini of Charlotte entry from change racing. No change from yesterday. He and his teammate Corey Lewis had the speed yesterday. They have the speed today. The question is, will they find victory lane yet again? On to the front straightaway one more time. 11 minutes to go from here at Watkins Glen. The battle for second has stayed intense. Paulo Roberte in the number 27 seems to have pulled away just a little bit from Amici in the number one, but they're not really kind of breaking away at all. It might be a car length or two here or there, but that three car group has stayed very, very tight. And for Richie Antonucci and that beautiful white Lamborghini Huracan, he loves to see those three cars locked together behind him because he knows that if they fight, his lead's just going to continue to grow. Yeah, that's, that's true. And the gap has pretty much stabilized around about three seconds. It went up a little bit on that last lap around uh, as uh, Roberti lost just a little bit of ground compared to his uh, previous lap. But there still isn't much to choose between that trio battling for second, third, and fourth places. Michi from uh, just outside Rome in Italy, lives on the coastline just outside of Rome, not a bad place to live. He's raced <laughs> uh, in Europe and also in the Lamborghini Asia Series as well, Super Trofeo Asia Series. But uh, when the opportunity came up here uh, the, to, to race in the North American Championship, he absolutely jumped at it. Uh, he raced with this team at the World Finals a couple of years ago with Wayne Taylor Racing and uh, Max Angelelli, who's one of the team principals there at Prestige Performance Wayne Taylor Racing. He got along well with Max, and uh, yeah, when that, I say when that opportunity came up, he jumped at it, and he's now finished on the podium. He's very proud of himself. He's finished on the podium at classic racetracks in Europe, Suzuka in Japan, and now here at Watkins Glen, and he's uh, he's put a big feather in his cap as a result of that. He's thrilled to bits and driving beautifully. The battle may very well be for second because Richie Antonucci seems to be walking away yet again at Watkins Glen. Still nine minutes yet to go. For Paolo Roberte running second in his number 27, Andrea Amici just behind Connor Daly in the 46 there from Precision Performance Motorsport and Lamborghini of Palm Beach. You and I talked about this. You think about the number of bullets that you have in a gun, the arrows and the quiver, whatever you want to call it, you look at these teams like Prestige Performance, Wayne Taylor Racing, five cars under the tent. Dream Racing has four, U.S. Racetronics has four. For, 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 for precision performance, easy for me to say, they only have the one entry, the 46 of Brandon Godovic and Connor Daly. And when you look at cars running that close on the racetrack and you think that the other teams have more data coming in, it just makes the performance of Connor Daly and Brandon Godovic and that precision performance motorsport team that much more impressive to me because they have a lot less data coming in, a lot of less information to work with, and yet they are locked in a battle with these bigger teams in front. Yeah, they are, and uh, they, 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 they work very hard. Aren't they? They're running a car in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship as well, uh, the precision performance motorsport team. So they've got, they've got the hands full over there. Uh, but last year they ran more than one car. And I'm sure they'd be hoping to run more than one car in the future as well. There's a lot of interest in this series for all sorts of reasons. Number one of which, uh, the racing is absolutely fantastic. There's a, a slight slip there. Oh, that, that was a lap, was that a lap car? I think it's a lap car. It kind of took me yeah, uh, back it. when we looked up uh, and saw. Picking, I think, yeah. yeah, getting out of the way of the leaders. And it can happen very quickly. You can run up, especially with elevation changes here, you can be surprised by coming over a brow and finding a slower vehicle in front of you. And I think that may have kind of caught Paulo Roberte out just a little bit, lost about six tenths of a second to Richie Antonucci, which is not what you want to do. And I wonder if to some extent, Richie Antonucci is just saying, you know what? Three seconds is reasonably comfortable. What I don't want to do is push too hard and be too abusive to these tires and to the equipment that I have. We had a couple of tire issues yesterday, and I'm not saying that that's a manufacturer issue by any stretch of the imagination. It was a lot hotter. This racetrack is incredibly fast. The loads that get put through them are extensive. And if you ride the curbs too much, especially the first driver when the tires are cold, you can do some damage that doesn't appear until later in the going. Yeah. So you 
got to think that maybe if you've got a good car underneath you and you're Richie Antonucci and you've got that three to four second lead, this pace is probably good enough right now. Indeed so. And uh, yeah, if uh, there was a, a, a brief full course caution towards the end, he wants to make sure he's got some Pirelli rubber underneath him for a potential restart. So all sorts of things to bear in mind. But you, right now he's managing this pace perfectly at the front of the field is Richard, Richie Antonucci. He's already the most, ex, the most uh, successful driver in Lamborghini Super Trofeo in North America. Uh, he had uh, 12 wins this would be another couple to add to that record streak. You talk about managing a lead, it's always impressive and it's nice to be able to brag and say, yeah, I won by X, but you know what? You don't get any more points for the additional seconds. And if a full course caution goes out, that lead goes away, whether it was 20 seconds or two seconds. So you need to, as a race car driver, as a professional race car driver, understand that a comfortable lead is all you need. Yeah. Uh, and you know, one of the greats in the sport, uh, Juan Manuel Fangio, he always said, uh, yeah, the goal really was to win by the smallest possible margin. There's no point in, in winning by a country mile when you can win by just a second or so or a few seconds. So uh, that's, uh, you know, that's a good adage to bear in mind for, for any young driver. Well, and I think now there are two battling for second place. Connor Daly may have gotten caught up between some slower traffic there in that nine, turn 9-10 nine, area. And it appears that Paolo Roberte in the 27 and Andrea Amici in the number one have been able to pull just a bit from Connor Daly through the climbing S's down the back straightaway with three and a half minutes to go. And Ashton Harrison, she's got herself up into second position in LB Cup, in 12th position overall. She's sig significantly faster by more than two seconds a lap than Mel Johnson, but Mel has a 16-second advantage, and we're into the final uh, three minutes of this race, so only another oh, probably couple of laps to go. Yeah, a couple of laps to go it'll be. Working through lap traffic, and Somebody things mirror, got very close. In fact... That was Andrea Amici in the number one, and I believe the number three. Yes, I think it was. Coming was through Randy turn Solari. 10, and I'm not sure that Randy Solari knew yeah. that Andrea Amici was there, and there was door-to-door -door contact at the apex of turn 10, and I think Solari got the worst of that. Saw an end plate off a rear wing, I think, or perhaps a mirror, but... Andrea Amici was not going to uh, slow down by any stretch of the imagination. He's not going to let Roberti get away. He's going to see if he can do anything in this last two minutes to get past that 27 in front. Connor Daly still sitting there in fourth, but about a second off the back of the number one e entry of Amici. And there is the mirror, and I don't even want to venture to guess what the mirror off a Lamborghini Huracan costs. Uh, no. If you have to ask, you probably can't afford it, <laughs> even the mirror. Uh, Ashton Harrison, by the way, she just uh, once again turned her best lap of the race, 148.4, which is a uh, pretty good pace. It's, uh, it's only a uh, second and a half or so slower than the leaders at this stage. And Mel Johnson, in response, turned his best lap at 151.0. So she was almost three seconds a lap quicker. I don't think she's quite going to have enough time to catch Mel, but it's been a really good drive once again from Ashton Harrison taking over from Stephanie Seema. I think they must have lost some time in the pits, so they will be ruining that at the end of this race. Still a good finish. You look at what they did oh, yesterday, yeah. and if they can hold on to this, they'll have another good finish. And I think they may have found some magic uh, with Tom Long helping him out this weekend. Wouldn't uh, be surprised to see his presence in the paddock for the remainder of the season if they look at that relationship and see what they've done. We talked about it. The pace this weekend has been remarkably quicker than it was at Barber Motorsport Park. So for Ashton Harrison and Stephanie Simo, use any trick in the book that you can to find an advantage. And right now, speaking of finding an advantage, it'll be interesting to see if there are any kind of a warning thrown out. It looked like Paulo Roberte well outside track limits through turn nine that time, the heel of the boots. And 
Andrea Amici somewhat with him as well. It looks like the white flag should be out this time by for Richie Antonucci. And indeed it is comfortable lead down into turn one. Put some more lap traffic between himself and the 27 of Paolo Roberte. And it may be change racing that Corey Lewis and Richie Antonucci drive for, but that Lamborghini of Charlotte entry, nothing has changed all year long. It has been at the point and been on the front row, won races, won yesterday, won in round two at Barber Motorsports Park, two victories on the season, one second place, the lead in the championship, and about two and a half more miles around Watkins Glen International, and it'll be a hat trick. It'll be three in a row. Yeah, it will, and uh, what a great way to uh, start off the season. This is just the fourth round out of 12 this year, so there's plenty more racing to come, but it's, a, it's a, an excellent way to start out, and a really good consistent pace being run at the front of the field by Richie Antonucci. Andrea Amici throwing caution to the wind deep on the brakes into the toe of the boot closing in on the back of the number 27 apollo roberte can he close in even more here under breaking into the heel of the boot turn nine no gain there he's running out of time and richie antonucci is running out of corners that he needs to go through amici now closes in coming back onto the short course he's gaining little bits at a time on roberte but it's not going to be enough he needs to lunge he needs to make a move for richie antonucci It'll be three wins in a row. He'll take another at Watkins Glen onto the front straightaway. The battle continues to rage for second place, though. But Roberte holds on, takes second place. Amici finishes third. And another spectacular performance for the 29 team. Change racing, three wins in a row. Lamborghini of Charlotte has to be ecstatic with what they see. And Corey Lewis, Richie Antonucci are going to put some more hardware on their mantle. Yeah, that was a really nice performance by both of those two. Great pit stop, great in-lap by Corey Lewis, a great out-lap also by Richie Antonucci using his experience in these cars. Heady drive by Jake Edson. He and his partner will take another win in the Pro-Am category. And so Jake Edson and Damon Aki, they'll celebrate again. Ryan Hardwick, a good run to second there. Looking back into LB Cup, Mel Johnson, is going to find another victory, it appears. And Stephen Agakani, the 16-year-old, well, he's well older than that. He's 16 years and three months. <laughs> he takes another victory. What a debut for that young man at Watkins Glen. And really, that is what the Lamborghini Super Trofeo North American Championship is about. Experienced drivers, pro drivers up front, showing younger drivers how it's done and pulling them along the chain, along that ladder of motorsports. Great racing here at Watkins Glen. Welcome back to Watkins Glen International, where round four of the Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America Series is completed. Time now to hear from the race winners. The start there, I thought we had him on the outside, but I guess we got a little bit of contact and boxed me out just a little bit on the outside and we shuffled back to third. But I think the name of the game was just uh, work smarter, not harder. I was able to let the front two guys kind of wear off some of their tires and I just kind of hung back out of the, the air there to uh, consider the tire to hand off to Richie. So um, all in all, great day, two for two on the weekend. And uh, you know, I look forward to the next race. Never had the double here, but um, what a team effort, right? The whole change racing team. Uh, they had to work hard nights, last few nights, just to get all three cars in the grid. But the pit stop today and Corey's in-lap into the pits is what won it. Um, we didn't get into penalties, so we ran it perfectly on the money as per regulations. I knew I had to get a cushion just in case there were some eventful lap traffic, which there was. But they behaved well. They stayed on line. We managed to predict it. And uh, what, a, what a start to the year, huh? Three out of four. Happy, happy birthday, Joni. Love you. Corey Lewis, they have made it be known that 
that raging bull on the side of the number 29. It is a force to be reckoned with in this 2019 season. Plenty more to come the rest of the year, and the championship still very much alive. The next race on television for the Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America Series comes in August during the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship weekend at Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. We'll see you then. And thanks for watching. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of the International Motorsports Association. We would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.